Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. It's February the 16th. It's the 16th of February 2024. It's like 2039 right now. 2039 at night. Just putting that out there. Okay, let me just put out some caveats. Um, yeah, please look out for my captions down below. They're not always accurate. They, uh, they're sometimes irreverent. They use a small G for God sometimes, depending on whether or not they've got caps. Uh, and they are, um, I will, God willing, maybe sometime in the future edit them. Okay. Like, yeah. If, if it's not giving, then that's why. All right. Um, then, <coughs> uh, makeup. I may or may not be wearing application makeup. Please just look out for that. If I'm wearing app makeup, you'll know because it's going to be bouncing off and on my face. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, no, the segment when I'm feeling down, I really can't deal. But anyway, I have a segment in my chat sessions where I pinch my cheeks to try and blush them so you can see, um, that I'm human. Yeah, I'm only human after all. I'm only human. There we go. If you prick me, I bleed. If you slap me, I, I don't know, like, I, I probably just don't react very. Really. Um, am I cool with this? Anyway, yeah, look, uh, am I gonna not add? I'm thinking of just going barefaced in some video that I'm looking at editing up there. Because the makeup keeps falling off, but that's just the story of my, my life. My makeup always keeps falling off, and we keep it anyway. Uh, I apologize if I am distracted. It, uh, it's just, it happens, okay? Like, that's just the story of my life. Okay, uh... Well, I am under attack. I'm under a lot of attack. I'm always under attack. I don't know when this is gonna end, yo. Like, I don't know whether to feel good or bad or uh, forsaken or abandoned. <coughs> I don't know why in the world am I choking. Is there some gas in the sky that we should be worried about? I, if so, like, yo, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to die. Like, I am ready. So if there is something here in the atmosphere killing us, like, it's just doing me a favor, frankly. Yeah, but some people aren't ready. What was I gonna say? Uh, where is my image? Like, there's, there's an image I downloaded. I know that I did that. Okay, my computer is giving me grief. It's taking forever in a day to do what I needed to do. So let's just get into the point. I, I really don't know how to feel at this point. You know, the Bible says that God gives us all a measure of grace, a measure of faith. Uh, yeah, for people to survive persecution, they have to be given the grace they need, the faith they need in order to get through it. And this thing that I'm going through, I have no idea. I, like, I just, I don't know whether to be flattered or just flat out heartbroken by what I would imagine something I didn't quite sign up for. -ish. One minute. Yeah, okay. Um, I really don't know what, how to feel. Like, seriously, I'm, I'm just so attacked, so abused, and I'm pursued by just so much darkness. And there's like one person in particular that just keeps going back to the drawing board, but that's not my only lament. There's actually quite a few. Y'all, you know, I do not know what it takes. Us like it. Like, I, I just, I don't know what it takes for forgot to finally kill a person like when ish yo my life is in danger like, i can't even my life is in so much danger like i'm in danger like i'm in trouble i am in so much danger i am in so much danger i can't even begin to describe what and i i really do not know what it takes for god to kill a person that i don't know look you know god has his own timing and he does things in his own way but yo y'all like I just like it. Yesterday I was, I recovered. Day before yesterday, I was, this thing that I'm going through, I went through a day before. Might have, I described the feelings and what happens, just a deep despair. And then yesterday I conquered, I prayed through it. Today I was attacked again. And the pain, guys, the, the emotional pain, what I, what I feel, yo, I am being accosted. Like I'm being forced, I'm being forced by the kingdom of darkness to do stuff I don't want to do or die and I don't know what it's gonna take for God to literally kill them all like all of them especially this guy in the US I just it's be it's literally it's between me and them and this world that we live in whether or not you want to believe me I'm, I'm it's boiling you all need to understand whatever people might feel right now about me is utterly irrelevant because what's more important than people's toxic emotions about me in my case is the fact that literally nobody can afford for me to die <laughs> i like y'all need to understand <laughs> ish man um hey yo like people cannot afford 
for me to die. I do not care what sentiment people have about me. I do not care how much you dislike me. I do not care how much you feel I am arrogant, I'm pompous, I'm full of myself. I don't care what your opinions, like you know what God calls me, carry. Every so often he calls me carry because that's how all of these menaces view me. If you've seen the movie Carrie, you will know what I mean. Carrie is this girl that is innocent. She's just a high school student trying to live her life. And then she gets invited to prom by some dude, wins prom queen. And even though she was living in somewhat below the radar, before prom queen, before she became what she became, she was unpopular or largely just ignored. And then next thing she becomes prom queen, and at prom, they pour pig's blood on her. It turns out that her even winning prom queen was planned, that they might just humiliate her. And there's a whole bunch of pig's blood that's poured on her. So is it pig's blood or just some red stuff? Uh, all the carries that have ever been redone, Gafan has the same sort of storyline. But this girl has superpowers of sorts, telekinesis or something like that. And her superpowers are generally under the radar and she controls them. And she is unprepared as well to share that with anybody. She doesn't tell anyone because it's taboo. She's going to get ostracized and isolated or whatever if she shares. I'm busy trying to do edits up top so my, my mind is scattered. I, like literally what I went through day before yesterday, I'm going through it again. And this is happening back to back. This attack on my person is happening back to back. And y'all, um, some p- ish, yes, yeah, y'all ish. Anyway, let me just finish telling the story of Carrie. All right, uh, this chick, because of what they do to her at prom, these telekinetic superpowers of hers where she can move things with her mind. With them then she ends up literally murdering. She kills everybody that did this to her. Her bullies, the people who put her in a position to suffer like that. End up six feet under. She kills them in one night. She causes accidents. She wreaks havoc at prom and basically kills these people. She ends their lives. These human beings took her to a point of reacting like that. They squeezed her in such a tight corner a tight spot that she just burst out into all that wrath and killed them all using her powers. Anyway, whatever. If you've seen the movie Carrie, you'll know what I'm talking about. I, I don't have to describe it to most people, really. You know what I'm talking about. And God, God, the Father in Heaven himself, has multiple times spoken, basically told me that the what I, I, I am like with these people is like Carrie. I'm like Carrie. Ish, y'all. I, I don't know what to do to cause people to repent, okay? I just, I, I do not know what to do to make people stop. And the thing about it is my emotions are also fading in that I am feeling less and less sorrow about anything, like anything that that is devastating that happens to people that had it coming. I no longer appropriately respond. That's what I'm trying to help you understand. With compassion, I, I am increasingly unmoved by human sorrow that comes to people that were diabolical what i'm trying to explain to you is that how can i i was the kind of person growing up that used to get hurt to see people getting what they deserved like when justice was served when you live in the black community growing up there's a lot of vigilante activity that happens because of a lack of respect by the police of black communities they don't care for us very much and so criminals are just left to run rampant to do their thing uh, they're just allowed to fester they don't get apprehended on time and when they get tip-offs when police get tipped off about where they at they don't rock up on time and like it's just it's a thing and so i guess we grew up seeing people basically taking matters into their own hands whenever somebody was suspected of bugenza uh, somebody was suspected of rape somebody yeah the community would grab that person and beat them like no man's business to a pulp sometimes I, I have never seen anybody die um but i have seen the look on the face of a person that was held by not i can't call them villagers like people in the community daddy jay-z and just pulled tossed to and from between people uh, because of a community that was fed up trying to apprehend this person seeing as the police would do nothing and when i saw the fear in the face of those criminals and their brokenness sometimes even the tears they would cry how much they would apologize it would break my heart so much 
I would feel sorry for them. I would feel sorry for them and that was a, a thing basically all the way up until maybe about a year ago. I don't know. I would feel really bad and being Christian made that even worse. Uh, I, I struggle to see people getting apprehended even though they deserve apprehension. I struggle. I used to. It's fading. You need to understand that is not a good thing. It's written in God's word that the Lord does not delight in the death of him who dieth. And the way that I have been so scorned and so afflicted by so many people, men and women alike, and even at the prospect of their public apprehension in a way that's going to be very scary to watch and sad for some. But for me, I would just stand back and not even wince anymore. It's like I want their blood to be spilled. I, it, everything, nothing of them must be left. You must understand I have been put in a position to be like this. And when you take a child of God to this place, you don't understand you're messing not with so much a human being, but the God of the universe who wants us to stay soft, who wants us to stay malleable, who wants us to stay loving and forgiving and compassionate, even to the worst of sinners. And when you get a child of God to a point where they can just observe, when you get a person to a point of actually wanting that end for a person, you are messing with the spirit of God operating in the heart of a Christian. And God is very jealous for the church. He is jealous for our hearts and how we think and how we feel. And when by attrition you get a person to a certain place, yeah, well, God himself is going to be the one that finally finishes this thing. We're not dealing with communities that are taking matters into their own hands and vigilantic uh, justice, or whatever you want to call it. We're dealing with God that finally effects justice. And if he does not delight in the death of him who dieth, we ought not either. But when you get us to a point where we are prepared like vigilantes, to end you fast and furious because God is not coming through fast enough. You're messing with the heart of a saint. The Lord has described me multiple times in the past. God uses analogies a lot in my life. He uses music, he uses analogies to help me explain to people a situation. It, it, yeah, it makes me relatable that way. I spoke about that actually yesterday. And for the past year, God has been basically he's been by the word of knowledge that particular gift that particular spiritual gift a word of knowledge he's been saying carry 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 you're like carry over and over again and i have not been comfortable with the prospect of being called carry because carry is a horror movie character and an innocent girl but that gets taken to the point of killing everyone in her environment kids in her school die at prom a whole bunch of them because of bullying her y'all need to understand I am a sweet, I was a sweet girl. I don't know whether I am or was really at this point. It's a fuzzy area. But what people freaking did to me was unwarranted. It was dare gone gratuitous. And it was to a girl that was so harmless. She was so sweet. She could not squash even a fly in the metaphoric sense. I was not one to give people attitude, speak badly, start fights or keep fights going. I was a sweet girl. And I sometimes feel as if though indeed just like Harry. One of the biggest reasons why I got afflicted like this was because people didn't expect me to react like this. They did not expect this to come out. And this here that I am feeling, guys, I am in so much shock and trauma right now that the whole day I've been shaking from just demonic attack. Like the demons that are around me trying to coerce me to a certain place. I cried in the afternoon because I feel listless. Like I do not know what more to say. I get it badly. Like I do not want these men and I also do not want their life. I hate witches. Like I literally, I don't know how many times I have to say that. It's because of what I have made an observation they are responsible for in my country and in my own life. And they don't repent. For me to therefore keep getting witchcraft spells, trying to make me look at God like he ain't Jack, because clearly the only thing is rubbish. It's like getting raped. And then somewhere along the way, seeing where your freaking rapist was coming from. That that is what trying to win me for the kingdom of darkness is the equivalent of of being getting raped and then understanding that i mean the guy did like me 
I was passing him shade on top of that and was wearing a mini skirt and I did at some point have a crush on him so I sort of gave him vibes that I like him and he only was working with what it is that were the cues I was giving him so when he finally thrust into me by force kind of see where he's coming from and so go out of your way to basically be like look I get it if anything instead of this being rape how about we just start a relationship and date then in that way we get to purify the rape seeing as we're together now like a rape victim ending up in a romantic relationship with her assailant Ooh, y'all you don't understand like you i i hate baloi i i hate them like to a point i'm shake i hate them i have no love in my heart at all for them as people the bible says we war not against flesh and blood but against rulers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places you must understand even that passage of god's word it's like i spy i hate the people that they are demon possessed that they are struggling to quit that they would like i hate them y'all need to understand how much on some thin ice some people have put me on then with god you're messing with my soul you're messing with my redemption you're messing with something that god said i cannot be plucked out of his hands i am shaking as i speak the wing butting a corner footy i am afflicted by entities people in the occult are trying to make me see utiba puma from where these freaks into ancestral worship and all of the things that they use to manipulate Lamka Gwen. They think Guguti because of how much I'm in so much pain that means so born. I will see. Ooh, God have mercy. You don't understand. They think the day's gonna come when I will consider into my Hebatung, how else can I describe this so you can understand how bad this is in my heart? I have to explain my heart. So maybe I can help people see Hore. This is never gonna happen. Imagine being a little girl at the park with your mom and dad and they are playing with you and you are buying ice cream from, from the ice cream van and then one day, not one day, right there at the park, some guy with a gun talking about how it is that listen up, listen, listen, everybody, the crowd at the park, this guy's got like a whole microphone and he's speaking into it. He's like, listen, listen, listen. Clearly, you all don't get what you need to get as people. And so you need to be shown just what you need to get. I have been sent by Tommy to explain to you that Tommy is the only way that you can live peacefully in the city. And so you cannot tell on Tommy. You cannot report Tommy to the police, nothing. And if you live peacefully with Tommy, you'll have your little lives that are measly. But if you don't agree with Tommy, you will die. While the people at that park know who Tommy is, he is a drug lord whose drugs have killed 15 students in the local high school and gotten a whole bunch of students at university in prison for dealing those drugs. Parents have mourned the death of children because of Tommy. So everybody hates Tommy in this community. But then one of his little lackeys rocks up and speaks and says, y'all better respect Tommy because he wants to be able to frequently, to just frequent this park walk. And just like you have some candy floss and ice cream without anybody spotting him and calling the police on him. We don't like snitches. They get stitches. So just sign an allegiance to Tommy and then we'll leave you alone. And then this child's parents decide to voice their opinion. First, the dad is like, I don't care what you have to say. We don't want Tommy in our streets. One of my mates has had a son pass away because of Tommy's drugs. Tommy gotta go. And as this man is busy speaking, bah, bullet goes in his head and he dies immediately. The wife then screams and screams and screams like a dog over her dead husband. And the daughter is also screaming. And then upon screaming is like, you animal, how could you? And as she is busy lamenting and mourning over her husband, boo, the bullet goes into her head. The child then has got blood splatter from the parents and everybody in this park is dead quiet. They're not running because they know if they run, a bullet is going to go in their head too. And this kid is just left shook, shook from this thing that has just happened. And then the guy says, this is what happens to you when you don't allege to Tommy. And then one by one, the people at the park cue and they sign on that petition to let Tommy run these streets freely while this kid is still shaking and crying and screaming because her parents are dead. That kid then grows up to become 12, 13 years old, seeing as she was just seven at the time of the death of her parents. 
and she is then expected as a 12 year old to see where all these mindless drones in her community are coming from and standing with Tommy but she's lost both her parents she knows of some people else that have passed away she's been orphaned by tommy and then she's expected to one day given that she's an orphan now she is suffering she's poverty stricken she is living on the street she's having a hard time just getting from day to day and she's only 12 years old and this child is expected to sign the same petition that her parents in standing against died 12 years ago what are the freaking odds you idiots that this kid is going to capitulate. What do you imagine is going to be the status of this child? You must understand this kid is going to become like Uma Thurman in Kill Bill at some point. She's going to become Beatrix Kiddo. She is going to be the grown-up that goes back for Tommy and his whole syndicate because nobody else would do it even if it means her life would end. Even if it means she would get killed in an attempt to get to Tommy. She would plot and scheme from a tiny little age waiting to get big enough to be a teenager, waiting to get big enough to be an, a young adult and go out of her way to unravel the syndicate of Tommy from the bottom up until she unleashes a live round in the skull of Tommy himself. There's actually a scene like that in Kill Bill, but instead of it being Beatrix Kiddo, it was Lucy Liu, otherwise known as Oren Ishii. And with Oren Ishii, her parents got killed by some Chinese mafia guy or Japanese mafia guy. And this mafia guy had a little obsession with, with girls. He had an obsession with little girls. And Lucy Liu knowing that, or Oren Ishii knowing that, decided to use the fetish of this man for young girls to get close to him. And one day in bed, where he was trying to have the body of a child, she then went and grabbed a spear and drove it into his heart and said, look at my face, do you remember me? Look very closely, who am I? I'm the girl whose parents you killed. The occult is like that little boss Tanaka from Kill Bill to some people. That's the name of the wicked man. It was boss Tanaka. The occult to some people. You all need, you freaking idiots. Like you need to understand what you do to families, what you do to perfectly help happy people. Some people that are like proper, barayiti. they are kids going to parks with parents eating candy floss and ice cream and then one day oh god have mercy you don't understand one day you then make a decision ugyo tatela a happy seven-year-old both parents and you shoot them dead right in front of her you decide to go and grab the life of a perfectly happy teenage boy and turn it upside down by killing his whole family in front of him you decide to go and grab the life of a perfectly happy 27 year old working and happy with family friends and she's just jovial all around and then one day at christmas lunch you decide to shoot her whole freaking family dead including her but she's the only one that lives and then that same mafia that same zombie mob that did that you then expect that because by fear just instilling a whole chunk of fear in the veins of that person due to what she experienced at johansa it's going to stay her from trying to get justice first and foremost and secondly it's gonna make her suture herself to you because you scared her into submission. You scared the woman into submission. So she's gonna forget about the uncle that you killed, the grandmother, the grandfather that you killed, the mother that you massacred, the sisters that she saw dying in front of her, the baby brother that she held in her hands as he breathed his last. She's gonna go and forget all that and just go on and get a job and live and thrive and get married. You don't understand what a lack of justice does to people. You don't know how it changes some people. And I live in a country that has been laying destitute by syndicates of Tommies, boss Tanakas, men and women who have killed parents in front of children, men and women who have killed children in front of parents, men and women who have killed siblings in front of each other, men and women who have lain and tied family zonk as a pelele, all like a, like an immediate and extended family, massacred, leaving one or two people. And you don't think some people gonna be made into carry on that day. You, you don't think that the day's gonna come. You who is a crime boss, when someone that is prepared to die, when I started talking here, what was the first thing that I said? Among the first things that I said, I was choking, wasn't I? There was something in chokang <coughs> and I was coughing and I wouldn't stop coughing. And I said, is there something in the air that I'm not aware of because my throat is choky? Don't know what that's about. But like, if at all it is a toxic gas, really, it's doing me a favor because I'm ready to go. If it's a toxic gas, it's doing me a favor because I'm ready to go. Essentially, I want to be done a favor. This evening, 
uh, about an hour before I came here to talk, maybe 45 minutes, I went to garage to go and buy a grandpa because I anticipate you getting a headache thanks to the spiritual attack. And as I was driving to the garage because of this like this barrage of attack, I drove past Kuro Primary School. Kuro Primary School. It is a primary school that is attended by my cousin's kids go there. Well, one now there's one left. The other one's matriculated. So it's not a primary school only. I think it's a primary mixed with high school. That school, I passed by it. And usually when I pass Kiro, driving to garage, because it's usually evening or weekend or whatever. But today it was busy. Very, very busy. Obviously there was like a parent's evening or something. There were a lot of cars driving out of there. As I yielded to allow some of the cars driving out of Kiro, passage to drive on, my heart bled. I'm not going to cry because it's not worth it. My heart bled because it's the little things, y'all, you don't understand. It's the small little things. As I sit there in my car waiting for all of these parents to get out, I was like, they took my opportunity to be one of the parents driving out of there for parents evening at my kid's school. I realized I don't have a life. I don't have basic things that people are supposed to have. I'm 39, old enough to have some kids at Kiro Academy and yet nothing of that nature is happening and so i was just bleeding from the observation of a basic thing in society like parents driving out of a kid's school in the evening that wasn't enough that wasn't the end i continued to drive i got to garage finally and go garaging i stayed in my car for something like five minutes five minutes without wanting to get out because i saw a woman go in there with her four or five year old daughter and from the back she looked like someone i might know from back in the day i wasn't sure though and i stayed in my car because i did not want to have to meet with somebody that is gonna be like oh hi Garaba, how are you uh meet my daughter yeah no she's five how are you what are you doing it's been a minute i did not want to explain so i sat in my car waiting for her to get out of the garage but I, I was looking at time i have to come and do this work so i took the risk to go inside there hoping that she's not who i think she was and indeed she was not who i thought she was it was a stranger it's someone i didn't know but just the fact that i have to freaking avoid anyone that i might know in society because of just how devastated my life is and with me having no milestones to write home about having been this beautiful young woman that should by now be married to a great man and have some beautiful children and yet i am sitting at 39 with nothing nothing when i was in the garage queuing waiting to purchase my grandpa then another woman came in with like three kids two boys and one girl black woman she looked more or less my age perhaps give or take slightly older and she had kids all over around her and the girl was so cute she was wearing this like crop top and these flary 70s pants with the whoops like e, e bell bottom and she was so cute she was so beautiful and she, they had done cornrows on her with fiber and everything and i was like i used to fantasize about dolling my girl up more than anything i wanted a girl first out of when like when i first got broody i wanted a girl because i wanted to adorn them the way that as a girl myself i like to adorn myself and this chick this little girl was adorned she was looking like such a girl she was so cute and her whole braids and everything was so adorable plus she's she was a little bit dark in complexion just like me and all i could think about is how did things get here how in the world am i in a lot of pain like i was literally welling up i was welling up over being unable to do basic things in life and there being no avenue to escape this situation and i was like mona haosoka jealousy has never achieved this in my life Le aksumon satan. This here is not jealousy. This here is people who are jealous, who make a decision to uksebenzis of satan, who make a decision to use Satan to devastate and shatter people's lives. I've dealt with jealousy in my life, being scanned up and down like I ain't jack by people. Having people interject as I speak because they don't want to let me thrive and be free in my loquacious disposition. And understand that this is a jealous attack. This person is disrespectful. But it has never had power to devastate my life physically, practically. It has only broken my heart. Because thank you, girl, you just gave me attitude. Thank you, dude, you just, dude, you just passed me shade. That's all that I experienced. But actual, feelable sabotage that is this deep and this broad. I'm sorry. No, like 
when people take jealousy to this height the bible says anger is overwhelming and fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy and unfortunately in the 21st century this jealousy that people feel for other people is being manifest into reality in light of what they desire for a person they feel should be maintained in a particular position they manifest devastation utter desolation for people how in the world am i not able to just drive out in freaking traffic without welling up just based on seeing people's cars driving out of a primary slash high school how in the world am i not able to just queue kukarajing waiting to buy something without my eyes getting watery why is that my life because everybody around me normally everybody around me that is living a normal life normal normal i am not speaking anything out otherworldly just normal all of this normalness around me normal okay normalness is heartbreaking because of a bunch of creeps that made a decision that they're going to devastate a life because bona they found a magic wand they discovered that there's a way to take that ugly heart it lets in kamona that ugly ugly pelo ya chichi boy spiritual halitri eng from here to timbuktu they decided to go and grab and bomb literally land a, a detriment in the lives of the people they feel that way about this thing is a weapon in the life of people <laughs> in the hands of people and it's not regulated in this country your tata in in gabi should have been married in her early 20s never mind 30s late 20s nah and make her a spinster at 39 never mind a spinster i think i might have been a little less sorrowful if i was just a spinster but i'm an unemployed spinster with no family you freaking psychopaths with no family no nobody coming through for me no love everything that they could stand in between they've stood in between it and now everything i've ever known and had in my life is gone Yonkinto, can you be so jealous that you would take everything nyiti yonk in everything everything from a person and it is precisely because i stood against all this rubbish that zonke lezinja let me do lo yabantu because they're not people that they made a decision ukuthi bazongi fundisa isifundo they made a decision that batlong rutisa a lesson batlong pontsa molao they made a decision that they're going to teach me a lesson because this is what happens when you decide to stand against a gangster like that's exactly what this is isn't it this is what you get when you stand against the kingdom of darkness it's like a whole drug lord in your community in your neighborhood making a decision to kill a person's entire family because that person decided to snitch on them or the kumaponi saying do you see the parallels do you see how it is that, that you witches are literally the equivalent or the tantamount when i use that when i use that as an analogy you're the equivalent or a tantamount of some drug lord some criminal kingpin some hard knock feared embellishing monster to a community's peace that everybody fears and people tiptoe around just so you you don't look at them and abantu that whistle blow against what you are they freaking go missing their fingers are found in boxes their noses their eyeballs are delivered in a ring box to their wives you are literally like gang gangsters you are like literally you're like gangsters you're like dangerous freaking gangsters that send a man's daughter's toes to him in a gift box that's what you are that is entirely what you are and when that kind of analogy is used why even are you not repaired why nyanzonda i hate you which is i in feeling it in nagangani i want nothing to do with you you're those rapists that later on after your victim just disappears into the woods and decides not to file a law a case against you open a case years later decide oh you're like that girl since you've already had sex i've already hit that moss so you might as well be my woman freaking creep scaring a woman into oblivion traumatizing the living daylights out of her and then you are expectant of her to see or to upuma from where where you are coming from literally trying to convince a person that is hella is not only scared of you but they loathe you trying to build a business case for yourself utabon with upuma from where where you're coming from you are like gangsters you are exactly like prolific gangsters that have made an entire city live on the edge of their seats you have prospered to make an entire city keep quiet about the terror you inflict on them just so they can get to keep all their family members 
just so their daughters can get to see the age of 18 just so their sons can get to propose marriage to their girlfriends one day they are prepared to let you do what you do and so far as you leave them alone but in any such environment as that there's always going to be the mom that lost a daughter to your crap and she will not care seeing as there's nothing here that she has any more left to live for don't you see You've taken away the light of her life. You've taken away the, the spunk, the bounce in her feet. You've taken away the sparkle in her eye. You've taken away the only child she had. She does not care that a whole hail of bullets is going to come into her body from your freaking foreman. Before she gets to you, she will try to murder you. She will just try. There is this short that I watched on YouTube. And this short keeps getting recommended to me over and over again because I watched it so many times on a loop that when people take the same footage, the same clip and put it in the same short from different channels, YouTube just recommends them to me. So I've watched that short maybe five times from five different YouTubers. And in each cycle that I watch this short, I linger in it for something like maybe 10 to 12 minutes. In other words, it repeats about 10 to 12 times. And I just keep watching it. After watching that show, ever since seeing the first YouTuber that uploaded that video, I also keep getting visions from God of me being like that woman. Now, let me tell you about the short. There is this woman in Germany in the 80s whose daughter was kidnapped, raped, and murdered by some psychopathic pedophile. This guy was facing jail time, and as he was being sentenced, this woman walked into the court and instead of waiting for him to be sentenced to whatever he would get sentenced to, right there in court in front of everybody, she did not even try to find him alone. She did not try to hire an assassin. She didn't try to hide behind a mask, nothing. She just, she rocked up wearing a trench coat and in her trench coat, she snuck in a gun. In this gun, there were seven bullets and she took that gun out and unleashed all seven rounds in this guy's back in court while he was being sentenced and as he was being shot everybody in the court was shocked they were scared indeed they jumped etc but the court martial the, the the court bailiff you know the people who make sure that there's order in the court the little policemen inside the court if i tell you they hesitated they took their merry time to stop her the people that were sitting down as well as this man was being shot did not run away they just yeah they ducked when a person is walking into a, a, a public area to cause harm usually people when the bullet is unleashed from the uh, from, from, from the gun usually people run scared they just run out if you see that short on youtube i forgot what her name is but she was a german woman you can google it people did not run out they just closed their ears and they ducked because they did not expect that this woman would just go on right ahead to shoot anything in the court she had a target it was clear everybody knew who she was she was the mother of the dead kid and when she started shooting this guy seven times did she unleash rounds into his body people nearly ducked and hit their ears because the gun the gunshots were loud all they did was scooter y'all have seen the video doing its rounds on twitter of, of, of uh, aka being shot when aka got shot Motlohong, it was a clearly targeted assault his friends and everybody around ran away they ran scared because nobody was aware what this gunman wanted was it just a lay shooter a random shooter trying to mow down to the ground as many people as possible that's how people r automatically react usually in a situation like that but in this situation in court literally nobody ran nobody ran because nobody expected that this was a rogue gunman or gunwoman they understood she was there on one mission and so they sat down however closed their ears bakuza and they covered their ears and were obviously visibly shocked and the bailiffs two of them took their merry time to hold her they literally waited for her to finish shooting and after she was done shooting she kept her those rounds she emptied the pistol and then threw the gun on the ground and only then did they walk her out gently she only got i believe three years in prison she was she was given a six-year sentence and she was supposed to she only served three at the time she was i think in her 20s she passed away from cancer in her 40s having been set free and she spent the rest of her life traveling or anything or something of that nature it was not communicated if she ever got married or had more children but after what happened nobody was out trying to give her grief she committed cold-blooded murder and she got three years cold-blooded murder in front of everybody in a court and she got three years in prison that's what happens when people take a matter into their own hands in front of people that 
low-key understand what needs to happen to a monster but the law is very restrictive around what ought happened to this monster the law is actually gonna send this menacing thing to prison and maybe even award him parole some years down the line and so given that human laws are very disappointing they're fluffy they don't finish the job when then people make an observation of a person doing what ought have been done all this time sometimes they just stand back and they let a woman end the life of a man and they wait for her to finish unleashing seven rounds of bullets into his body. Then only they gently drive her out. They gently walk her out of the courtroom. And then I guess a commence a process to now get her put in jail for killing the man that raped and killed her daughter. Multiple times over and over and over again after watching that video on a loop on a loop on YouTube from multiple YouTubers. The Lord then shows me that woman in a vision. I told you sometimes I listen to stories and then I dream the reenactment of those stories again. God's showing me that's your story. And the Lord has also been showing me Ormosari Ole that killed Mwana, not Mwana, King, the man that killed Mwana Hai, having first raped her. That that's how this whole thing of mine is also going to unfold. First he called me Carrie and then he compared me to that German woman. Because there comes a time when a person has been so afflicted and the laws of the land are not enough. There's nothing that is ever going to bring her the peace that she needs or him the peace that he needs because of everything that was taken. If you have seen the movie Law Abiding Citizen as well with Jamie Foxx and that other white guy, he also, Darby, is the guy that kills his whole family, his wife, his children in front of him. But because he was in a fr frenzy himself, he was shot, he was bleeding out and so dizzy. The fact that he saw the criminals who killed his wife and children was not enough. It did not hold in court because he, he was bleeding out. He was hazed and dazed. It was, he was, the, the man was let go on a technicality. The man that you saw killing your wife and your child gets away on a technicality. This guy took matters into his own hands in law abiding citizen. And the guy who is Darby, the one who killed his child, his child and his wife. He disembodied him, cut him up into a whole bunch of people pieces while he was still alive and then only finished him off. He then also went after the justice system that let that guy go. The movie does not end well. The guy ends up killing himself by mistake. A bomb goes off because he was still trying to pursue justice all the way to the very end. Jamie Foxx warning him, don't do this, don't do this. It's not going to give. bring them back. It's not going to bring them back. And the, the, the sense of justice inside human beings, you don't under, you underestimate it. People, the sense of justice that they have inside when the laws of the land are not trying to take anything. They're not trying to fix anything. They're not trying to help you along. They're trying to give a person a slap on the wrist. What the heck? When the laws of your country are doing that, you will literally go and grab a law-abiding teacher out here wearing a bow tie every Wednesday at school. The way he's just such a little nerd and will convert that guy into a terrorist for a day just to bring justice to himself because his whole city was prepared to let him go without his wife and children, without any justice being effected against those who killed them. You will grab teachers, doctors, you will grab project managers and accountants. You will grab bakers and soccer moms and you will make them prepared to go to jail to get what they need because I can't be a freaking soccer mom anymore you idiot because you took away my 14 year old boy you took away my child so don't come tell me about prison dungarees I don't care there are things guys you know, <laughs> when you take away everything from a person that has mattered and just like me at the beginning of this segment saying that what is that is that a gas in the sky that might choke me to death I don't care I'm ready to die when you have so withered away and filed down at a person's life that all they look forward to is death. They don't care about prison. They don't care nothing. When you so decimate a person's life until they get there, that person is not going to be scared, dear idiots, to go through a hail of bullets in a whole guarding camp around whoever this woman or man is actually trying to get to. She will not care. She will die trying. She will strategize to get to you. Like Oren Ishii, she is going to put herself in your room knowing that you are a child pervert, knowing that you are a whole pedophile. She will put herself in your presence at 12 years old and grab a sword. Yesterday, she was a sweet little six-year-old. Now today, she's a sword yielding 12-year-old and she will end your life. Because when you put people in a position to freaking have nothing to lose, you make out of them law-abiding citizen. You make out of them carry. You make out of them that German woman. You make out of them people that are prepared to die getting to the animal that everybody let go. And witchcraft produces animals that everybody lets go.
it produces these beastly men and women that all of South Africa lets go. They let them go. You cause so much fear in people. I don't want to be bewitched into oblivion. I don't want my life to end up looking like a rabos. Uh -uh, I'm not going to mess with this. I'm not going to be a, a whistleblower. Whoa. Yeah, some people have got kids to lose. They've got wives to lose jobs. Some people have got pets to lose houses. Some people have got entire reputations to lose lives, legacies. Yeah, but these witches sometimes devastate people so freaking much, so much that they end up having nothing to lose. And you, Dagon monsters, I'm there. I am literally at a point where I don't even care who dies. So you can understand those of you that are not related to me, how far this thing has gotten. I have a cousin that used to be my very best friend. We were tight, Sofas Lasane, sutured together, Laurel and Hardy, like how Namutu that could ever separate us. Both born 1984, did everything. At some point, if that chick died, I would have dived into the casket and insisted on being buried with her. Now, she's just another monster. I don't care. Like, she is my mortal enemy. As in, I want her to die. As in, I get excited when God tells me that the clock is ticking and she's on her way out. Because she has spent an entire decade trying to finish me off. The first thing she did was a failed human sacrifice on me. And when it did not work, she then took everything from me. She pulled the rug from underneath the feet of Garabo to steal the career, to steal the husband prospects, to steal the education degree, to steal the... This chick... <laughs> listen to this. She has cast a salary spell on me. What is a salary spell? I don't know until I did the mathematics. In other words, she has cast a witchcraft spell to make sure that I don't earn a certain amount of money, more than it, for the rest of my life. That I will always just be living hand to mouth, just barely freaking breaking even. She cast a spell on me to make sure that even if I were to become a salaried person again, that I will only at most be able to afford bare necessities and live in the most rudimentary of foundational starter packs of mukukus that nobody will ever take me seriously ever again, no matter what I try. She has cast spells on my ministry, so no one will listen to me. Literally nobody. In one dream, there was this batch of women that stood to be blessed by my message, given that we live in a country that is severely afflicted by gender-based violence. And she had put a, uh, what do you call this thing? Soundproof wall between me and these women. And she was surveilling them, guarding them, making sure they don't listen to my message. So essentially, she's among the people that have put plugs in people's ears to not listen to the gospel as it is coming out of my mouth. Because of all of this frantic activity from this witch. About four months ago, the Lord counseled me and told me that she's going to suddenly die, a sudden death, and that her death is going to be similar to that of the late celebrity Tuli Tilis. A car accident coming back from somewhere, sudden. And I have communicated this on the rooftops over and over again saying leave me alone spiritual harlot otherwise you're gonna pass away like Utuli Tilis and all she's done is repeat the same spells over and over again this chick has come between me and my family she has tried to cause me to envy my younger sister she has messed with my mom's mind there is nothing she has not come at me concerning so like Lerato that I used to have for her has been converted into a severity of hatred no manga shona, I wouldn't cry. I would definitely not go to the funeral. Footy, I would not be afraid to basically tell her parents, if she doesn't leave me alone. They've been warned. When she dies, it is going to be so taboo stinky because of everything I would have said in the run-up too. And this chick would still not have stopped all the way to the end. When the Lord told me that she was going to suddenly die, I felt relief and not sadness. This is not a person I am scared to lose. This is a person I can't get rid of fast enough. But I told you, Boomba, we used to be tight. How did that Boomba of mine get me to a point of wanting her dead? When you strip away from a person everything that they can ever do for a life, when you eradicate from them all sense of purpose, when you leave them destitute, going nowhere, doing nothing, cannot do like proper, I can't keep myself busy with raising some kids and everything. I can't keep myself busy with loving a man. I can't keep myself busy with working some hard knock job. I can't keep my, I just have to sit here 
for the rest of my life scraping by completely ignored and phased are people about my situation and this woman is content Uguti, this should be my situation she like me could not care less if i died so this here frankly is an even playing ground she's my mortal enemy we are fighting unto death and she will be the one to die not me and magashona i will likely ngapa and storm off the kind of person that if she were to die i would not even call the paramedics i would not call the coroners i would insist that the fields the bee that the beasts of the fields that are scavengers come and eat her flesh like jezebel you know when she died the dogs licked her blood that's what that chick deserves and at this point i don't care i don't care i cannot die and she's not the only one i feel this way about Every time I see what they're doing, more and more animosity and hostility is brewed in me. And the thing that crushes me to a fine powder, the thing that devastates me to a point of irreconcilability is the fact that ain't no police coming for this. Crimes have been committed. There is nothing that my nation is doing. My city, my environment is doing. There is not enough justice effected against a certain person. When you've got nothing to lose and your city is not gonna help you get justice, you take matters into your own hands, don't you? That's exactly what happens. So I came here on YouTube and I started sharing my witness, my testimony. I get basically whistleblowing. I started to whistleblow against the kingdom of darkness, against these menaces and what they do to people. I did what was right. I did what ought have been done. And because they don't want to get exposed and because they operate as well, like criminal lords, gangsters, the moment they hear of a snitch, they pompously sit on a pinnacle and they say snitches get stitches. So all of these monsters have been trying to give me stitches, but they don't realize that I'm Uma Thurman and Kill Bill. They don't realize that I'm Oren Ishii. They don't realize that I am a bereaved mother whose children have been taken, so what's the point? I don't, I don't care about prison. Who cares about prison? They don't realize that I literally have nothing to lose. So they can intimidate everything and everyone else out here in these streets. They've been trying to make me have a child so I can have something to lose. Because they see who around and talk. There's nothing I have to live for. And so I am a snare to their attrition, to their intimidation. I am not moving, I'm not biting, I'm not barging. Precisely because, <laughs> you, what, you, yeah, you can grab a mom and intimidate the living daylights out of her with poverty and loneliness when she's got kids to send to school and feed. You can grab a husband that has a wife to dote over and some children to protect and tell him if he doesn't want to do what you want him to do that he's gonna lose all that you can get, grab a grandmother that has grandkids to protect and intimidate that lady you can grab anyone with stuff to lose and threaten the crap out of them but you can't rock up at a person that's sitting on the side of the street impoverished broken devastated lost all family lost everything absolutely nothing is left in her life that she used to have anymore and thoroughly throw that crap all up in my grill and expect me to wince and barge expect me to embrace the very monster who killed my mom and my dad, the monster who killed my sisters, the monster who killed my whole family, the monster that literally massacred everything and everyone that I loved and left me for dead, but I survived. They thoroughly expect that the day is going to arrive when I see where witchcraft is coming from. They want to convert me to the kidnapper. Oh, goodness. <sighs> That's like it. As in, I've got a freaking headache, man. They they, they want me. They want me to join that filthy app. They took my husband, my tatala bantuan. They took away my career, everything in Yisabin Zalamanji. They've taken away it in a freaking YouTube channel, yam, and they think Wutimi Nangzo Hamba in your twasa. Yeah, like proper ending up dating my rapist. Yes, Langdelaman. Let's move to the next part.